Hey folks, today we're taking a look at the latest app from Matthew Fetcher and AudioKit Pro. It's J6. Let's get started. J6 gets its inspiration from the iconic Juno Synth series. Its warm pads, filter section, and of course, the two-button chorus help define the sound of the 80s. J6 pays homage while adding new modern features, some of which you'll recognize from other AudioKit Pro synth apps. Unlike some of the more recent AudioKit Pro apps, J6 is not a rompler. Matthew has described this app as AudioKit Pro's new flagship app, just as Synth 1 was before. So let's do a quick comparison of the two. Both apps are packed full of features. Synth 1 uses morphing oscillators, while J6 has four set waveform shapes. Of course, they're both built with the open source audio framework AudioKit. Synth 1 is based more on analog subtractive synthesis with effects, while J6 takes its inspiration from more specific synths like the DeepMind and Juno. Of course, Synth 1 is completely open source, you can download the entire project, and the components that make J6 are open source, but the project as a whole is not. One of the biggest differences, and the thing that people have asked for from Synth 1 for the longest time, is that J6 has full AUV3 support. This means that you can use the app inside of your favorite iOS DAWs. Next, I'll give you a quick walk through the app, and then we'll finish up with some preset demos, including ones from the Moby Pixel Bank. Working from left to right, the app starts with an LFO section similar to the Juno. As we go through this, you'll notice several aspects that pay homage. One that I thought might have been a bug at first, but it turns out it is actually a feature of the Juno series, if you want to call it that, is that you can only play up to 12 voices sustained at one time. The reason they called it a Juno 6 originally is because it only supported six voices at a time. The more you know. Next, we have our oscillator section with two main oscillators plus a sub and noise oscillator. After that, we have our classic filter section with a dual envelope for amplitude and filter cutoff. The next page has an arpeggiator which was first introduced in NerdSynth and an optional separate filter envelope. Now onto the effects tab, here we have a super saw setting for stacked detuned voices and that legendary two button chorus. And as you can see, there are a bunch more effects mixed in. The LFO tab is next, and here I want to show you a quick trick. While you can't detune your oscillators by sense, you can set an LFO to target a fine-tuned value for an oscillator. The LFOs are really powerful for customization in this synth. Now to finish up the patch, we'll add some filter movement, some chorus, and add a pitch wobble. And finally, on the right hand side, there's a built-in sequencer and an XY pad. Now let's hear some presets. This is an early copy of the app, so when you download this, it's probably gonna have more available. Some of the things might be moved around, but the sound engine is pretty consistent.
And finally, presets from the Moby Pixel Bank. And that's it. Congrats to Matthew and Audio Kit Pro on launching another awesome synth. Be sure to pick this one up. It's free. This is going to give you a taste of what all the Audio Kit Pro apps are, but at infinity less money. I'll have a link to the app down in the comments. Let me know what you think about it. Check out the presets and feed the algorithm. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.